there is significant pushback here in the U.S., in part because it fits a Chinese narrative, and the Chinese have decided, the regime has, again, not the people, the Chinese regime has decided that one of the best ways to get what they want in terms of U.S. behavior is not to try to influence, you know, the White House, but it's to reach out to local and state officials. So here's where I'm going with this. When you look at, at decisions made at state level or local level, the Chinese regime and, and the, the uh, ODNI, the Director of National Intelligence, released a report, and they talked about this. They said the, the, the Chinese are r doubling down on their efforts to exert influence through a variety of means, um, environmental groups, um, encouraging litigation, right, against mining operations or whatever it may be, um, social influencers, to try to get a message out, right, that influences local and state regulators to do things such as saying, no, got to keep it in the ground, you know, no, we don't want phosphate mining, as an example. Um, and that serves the purpose. Whether, whether an environmental group or whether a, uh, a group um, that's out there that, that focuses on these things and, and files lawsuits constantly for environmental purposes, and then, by the way, those, those lawyers, you know, usually recoup their funds from, you know, what is called the Endangered Species Act that allows them to get their money back. So you think, oh, wow, these lawyers are fighting and it's pro bono. No, it's not. They're getting paid. So, but they're doing it, whether they do it knowingly or whether they do it uh, unwittingly, it still serves the purpose of the Chinese regime, which is looking to say, keep it in the ground because we want to control all of this. And again, whether it's cobalt, whether it's lithium, whether it's phosphate, whatever it may be, it's, it's, it's a fascinating thing. But the, the point being that we can't pursue a green future and at the same time overregulate uh, the mining process. And uh, it just doesn't work. China has so much influence on America. It's, it's, it's crazy how different the playing field is between like what we're allowed to do. Like Americans can't own businesses in China. They can't own land in China. They can't buy property. But China can do all those things here, and they can influence our universities. They bring their students over here. Their students siphon up data and information, and oftentimes get caught. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. it's kind of yeah, crazy. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they get caught, yeah. right? Yeah, there's been quite a few of those cases. There but, have been, but but, but the, you think about that's a, that's the tip of the iceberg, right? That's a, that's a that's a small number that. Because it's it's a, it's an incredibly heavy lift, right? A counterintelligence operation is is really tough, and so I look at that and I think, yeah, I'm, thank God we caught that person. But then you think, well, how many more are there out there? Right. So, That's the thing. It's like yeah. how many of them are just more careful? Yeah, yeah. It's um, it is interesting in a way. We used to talk about it during when you know when we were on the war on terror, right? And everybody's forgotten about that, you know, for the most part. Although. We probably should talk a it's little bit about it. It's on the back about, burner. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's bubbling away in Afghanistan, which...